Hello and welcome everybody to week two of our mission series. You may recall from last week that we were looking at the urgency of the gospel. There are so many people in our world who do not yet know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Today we're going to be shifting our focus slightly from the urgency of the gospel to the priority of the gospel. And we're going to be digging into John chapter 17 as we look at this aspect of the gospel together. So please join me in prayer. Father God, give us faith to receive your word, understanding to know what it means, and the will to put it into practice. And, the, and we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Who or what things have priority in your life? When you wake up each morning, how do you decide what you're going to do and what you're not going to do? I mean, of course, we all need to eat, we all need to sleep. But what do we do with the rest of that time? If you're anything like me, uh, we probably just flick on the phone, open up the, the iPad or the, or the laptop, start watching the television. We haven't even thought about it. We haven't even realized what we're doing. We do it so frequently. Now I know that we live in uh, rather unusual times at the moment and uh, being in lockdown things are all skewed a little bit and uh, we're all f uh, spending so much time on screens as a result. But even in lockdown when we have to spend uh, all this additional time on our electronic devices, what are the priorities when it comes to your screens? What are you choosing to watch? I, I know for our family, sport always gets a, a big hearing in our, in our household. And uh, particularly over the last two weeks with the Olympics on, uh, we've watched an enormous amount of uh, sport. And I've got to say, my favourite event in the Olympics uh, has to be the pole vault. Uh, I'm sure you've all got your own preferences. I love the pole vault. When you're on the phone, who are you talking to? When you, who do you message? Uh, what are you talking about? What part does the gospel play in shaping all of these decisions that we make? For Jesus, the priority has always been to proclaim the kingdom of God. In the passage that we're looking at today in John chapter 17, we're given the rare privilege of being able to listen in to Jesus as he talks to his Father in heaven. The moment when he prays to his father just before he's about to be arrested and be crucified on the cross. As Jesus prays, it becomes apparent that there are three things that are a priority for Jesus here. Uh, firstly, to glorify his father in heaven. Secondly, to reveal that glory to his disciples. And thirdly, for all the believers to be united to God. We're going to look at each one of these points in turn. So firstly, the priority for Jesus of glorifying his Father in heaven. Uh, at the beginning of chapter 17, if you've got your Bibles open there in verse 1, Jesus prays, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. Jesus' priority has always been to glorify his Father in heaven. And he does that by revealing that glory here on earth. From the very beginning of time, we see that that, that to be the case. Uh, in John chapter 1, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And furthermore, through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Jesus left the very throne room of, of heaven and came down to earth to be born into the world. Further on in John chapter 1, we read that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, 
who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Jesus, from the very beginning, it has always been his priority to glorify his Father in heaven. And now, as Jesus is about to go to the cross, he prays to his Father in heaven and he says, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. You know, Jesus is about to go to the cross. He's about to be crucified. He's about to take the full wrath of the whole world's sin onto his own head. He could have asked his father for anything, and his father would have given it to him. But Jesus' priority is not to bring glory to himself. Rather, his priority is to bring glory to his father in heaven. As Jesus is glorified through death on the cross, so his father in heaven is glorified through the salvation of all who believe. The Apostle Paul sums it up in this way in his letter to the Philippians. Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's the priority of Jesus, to glorify God. That's the priority of the gospel. To bring glory to God. Well, the second part of Jesus' prayer prioritizes the people that Jesus spent most of his time with while he was here on earth, his disciples. The whole purpose of Jesus coming into the world was so that men and women chosen by God may know the Father in heaven, the only true God, and know Jesus Christ, his Son, the one whom he had sent. The disciples, with the exception, of course, of one, are a living testimony of Jesus' ministry. Jesus, as he speaks to his Father in heaven, highlights for us how deeply he cares for his disciples. Have a look there at verse 6. I have revealed your name to them. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. You know, we often hear the disciples criticised pre-Jesus' death and resurrection for their lack of understanding. And that may be true on occasions. But in these verses, Jesus is declaring that his work here on earth is done. Jesus' priority of proclaiming the good news about the kingdom of God, his priority of glorifying his Father in heaven, his priority of remaining obedient to his Father's will, has resulted in disciples who know with certainty that Jesus truly is the Son of God. That he has been sent by God the Father himself, to give eternal life to all who will believe in his name. The consequences of their obedience uh, to the word of God as revealed to them through Jesus is that they are united to the Father and to the Son. And this means that they no longer belong to the world. Now there's a whole lot more that we could say on that, but uh, we need to move on. 
And uh, the third priority that Jesus uh, places is on all believers. Have a look there, verse 20. Uh, Jesus prays and he says, My prayer, Father, is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message. Uh, when he talks about them, he's obviously referring back to the disciples. And he says, so my prayer is not for the disciples alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through the disciples' message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus' prayer here is for the believers, people who will believe the message of the gospel. That believers are so identified with God, so united to God, so dependent upon God, that they themselves become the place where the Father dwells and continues to carry out his work. In other words, Jesus prays for God to send his Holy Spirit to live and work in the lives of believers to so change them that the only satisfactory conclusion that the world can come to is that Jesus is truly the one sent by God. Well, what do we do with all of this information? What's the take-home point for us today uh, as we have listened to what Jesus has prayed? Brothers and sisters, we must give priority to the gospel. We've heard from Liz, we've heard from Andrew about how SRE is impacting young people in our schools. When the gospel is proclaimed, God is glorified. Today, more than ever, the harvest is ripe. We heard about that last week. People are tired from being in lockdown. They're anxious about the growing numbers of COVID cases here in Sydney. People are hurting mentally, emotionally, financially. They're lonely, they're frustrated, they're often overwhelmed. And it's into this world that the Christian gospel can speak powerfully. Jesus, as we heard last week, went from one town to another, proclaiming the message that the kingdom of heaven was near. He healed the sick, he cared for the poor. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. We live in a world that is not too dissimilar from the world that Jesus walked in. But we have a shepherd who gave his life for us on the cross and who has defeated sin and death. We have been given a new hope and a promise of life after death that is free of all the sufferings that this world is plagued with. We have a message that speaks to our world's current crisis. A message of hope that reaches beyond the present day sufferings of this world. That is why we must give priority to the gospel. Jesus' closing words to his Father in heaven, a confirmation of the priority that Jesus placed on proclaiming the glory of God to all the world. I pray that these words that Jesus prayed may inspire us to share that same priority in our lives. Let me leave you with the words that Jesus prayed from uh, the end of chapter 17 uh, there in verse 25 righteous father though the world does not know you i know you and they know that you have sent me i have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that i myself may be in them Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have made yourself known to us through your own dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that Jesus prioritized obedience to your will over everything else in this world. 
so that we might know that he is truly your son. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that unites Christians throughout all generations. Help us to reflect your love, Father, to all people, so that the world may believe the truth about Jesus. In whose name we pray. Amen.